I'm going to answer a viewer question that I think is a great question. And we're going to go from my studio to the Sublime. And that will be, the Sublime will be paintings that I did not do. So let's get started. Karen asked the question after looking at some of my videos that I've done previously on triads. Her question was, well, how do you know what triad to use? And that's a really good question. I had to spend a few days to think about it, and I think I've come up with uh, an answer. But more than an answer, I'm going to do a demonstration. So if you have a light colored flower, like this yellow flower, in that case, I'm going to pick a triad that uses spectrums along the uh, warm range. So I'm going to use yellow, orange, and a little bit of red. Rather than using one color, the whole idea here is to use more than one color to fill in a light value. The flower petals are light, but if I made them all yellow or variations of yellow, the painting would look very flat. What I do instead is I put in three colors. So you have a yellow, an orange, and a red going on there. So again, what you have to do is first establish what the value is. If it's light, find a light triad. If it's dark, and some of these petals are darker, then find a darker triad. So here's an example of that. So here's a dark green and then a medium green, and then I'm going to put a yellow next to that. So again, I'm using three colors to fill in uh, different masses, the masses being the foliage underneath. There we go. See how they blend together? So I'm not outlining each flower. What I'm doing is I'm looking at shape, and I'm applying three colors to fill in that shape. Same thing if you have, let's say, some trees. Same idea. Start where the light hits them will be the lightest. In this case, I picked a yellow. Then I mix a medium green, and then I'm going to put in um, a darker green. And you can go even further if you want to really pop color. You can mix up a, a dark red or a purple and plug that in right underneath where it's the darkest. And you will see color pop from there. The whole idea is to enhance color, is to um, almost put an exclamation point, so to speak, on your color. Now I'm going back to the uh, dark part of the flower, and I put in, again, three colors. That would have been, I think it's an ultramarine blue, and then an alizarin crimson, and then a burnt sienna. So again, three colors to fill in one very small mass there, but it's very different to have three colors fill in that mass than to have one. And they come together. Let's see what happens next, because I can't remember. <laughs> okay. Ah, clouds. We've talked about clouds before. Clouds are usually made up of three colors. The spectrum has to be a red, a yellow, and a blue. So that's what's happening here. I'm creating a light mass using a red, a yellow, and a blue. And it doesn't matter what red, yellow, and blue. If they were dark clouds, I would use different red, yellow, and blue. But these are on a light, sunny day. So there we go. Clouds are formed. Now I've gone back up above and just enhanced that yellow a little bit and even thrown a yellow spot into that cloud because I can do that. These are light forms. Anytime there's a light form, I can plug in um, a, another um, what I call color spot of value. All right, now we're going to get into the landscape a little bit more. Two colors working in the background. Here's where a triad will work to fill in a larger mass in a landscape, for example. Rather than paint every individual tree, I'm going to paint the mass, starting where it's dark at the bottom. Then I apply some green for the mid-tone, and I need to find something for the light. So generally, I think to answer Karen's question, the color doesn't matter as much as deciding what value is the mass that I want to take care of and finding um, a, a light and a medium and a dark to fill in that mass. I mean, that's really the answer. And you will find along the way that you will find triads that you particularly like. Here's a little trick of the trade, which is to put in some orange in a field in the background. That orange is going to enhance everything else. Now, the field probably wasn't orange. It probably was a lighter yellow, maybe, um, or, or a medium yellow. But by putting in that orange, it enhances all the other colors around it. All right, we're going to dry everything and keep going. Now, I said that I was going to go from the regular to the sublime, because we're looking at my painting, which is regular. Then we're going to go to the sublime, the real masters. All right, so let's say you have a dark where foliage comes in and is dark in between. I'm going to use a triad again. So this is probably alizarin crimson with a little bit of blue added to it. 
and then I mixed up again a darker blue, which turns into violet. You see, I'm cutting that in, cut that in, and also adding some umbert sienna. So that's actually a triad going on uh, at the bottom, underneath those flowers there. But you can see how it makes the flowers in front pop, but I'm still doing the same thing. I'm looking at an overall value mass, and I say to myself, what cut, is it dark, medium, or light, that mass? And I say, oh, it's a dark. All right, if it's a dark, I have to find three colors, a light, a medium, and a dark, in order to make that mass uh, coalesce together and make the thing that I'm uh, uh, painting pop. Uh, one of the things that, that um, is, oh, what I did here was I went around the clouds to soften the edges, and now I'm going to put it in the sky around it. Um, in the sky, I'm not putting a triad. I've done the triad work in the clouds. You don't always have to use triads. And, you know, that can be overdone. <laughs> but I think it works really well in the clouds. Um, Oh, I know what I was thinking of. You know, I want to say that, that there are rules, um, but of course, rules are always made to be broken. So in general, what I try to do with triads is not use opposites. So I wouldn't use a cerulean blue and an orange, for example, uh, or, a, um, or a dark green um, along with a red. But the truth is I do do that sometimes, especially if I want to create a gray, um, then I will use opposites in a triad. But if you want to keep vibrancy of color, and I have a video about this, about um, painting around the color wheel and, and how dullness can occur, that's a different video. I just wanted to show a demonstration of all the different ways that I use triads, both for small masses, for larger masses, for backgrounds, for skies, for clouds. But the whole idea is not what colors to pick, but decide, look at the mass, and then decide for myself, do I need a dark triad, a medium triad, or a light triad? And then pick three colors that will do that for me. And it does take a little bit of practice, of course, and you find um, ones that you like and ones that you don't like. So, you know, I have my tried and true ones, and, and you'll find ones that you find are tried and true. Now, this again is always not about matching the photograph, but matching the value to the photograph. So in a minute, we're going to look at the real masters and what they do. Oh, this is just a little bit of a trick, which is I, I put some cerulean blue on the brush. There we go. And I just put a color spot of value in. You see how that pops just a little bit? Yeah. So that's, again, a little bit of a trick. That has nothing to do with the triad. It's just something that when you paint for a while, you start to get a feel for something, like putting an exclamation part, point at the end of a sentence. So there are some various ways that I use triads in my studio, and um, especially for landscape painting, but I use them in faces. I use, I want to use them in everything. Let's look up closer. See how that you can see the colors, that there were three colors used and how they come together. Again, this is dry paper, 140 pound uh, weight, and, um, and wet paint into wet paint. And here's a close up coming up of the uh, tree that I did. See the little bit of red at the bottom? how that kind of enhances the, um, the overall look of the, the piece. So, you know, it's kind of weird because in a way you say to yourself, well, I painted two green trees, but um, I used the full spectrum in order to do that. I used a red, a yellow, and a blue in order to do that. And here's the landscape when you pull back a little bit. And you can see the triad work in those clouds. All right, so now let's, oh, we're about to go to the sublime. So here we go. Oh, sorry, we're not at the sublime yet. This is still me. Uh, you can see the triad work in the background of that, those daffodils, and you can see the color spots of value of the alizarin red on the right, those two dots. Here's an example of using a triad that's all in sort of a monochrome kind of uh, manner in order to find uh, the petals on a, on a rose. So it's triad work, but in this case, I'm using uh, variations of red. Now we can get to the sublime. Ah, oh, the sublime. Okay, so this is, um, this is John Singer Sargent. Look at the sails and then look at the sails close up. See the triad work he's doing? That's the same thing that I was doing in the clouds, only I'm not John Singer Sargent, only he is John Singer Sargent. <laughs> you can see the difference. Here's Winslow Homer. Take a look at the clouds in the sky, although there's lots of triads in this painting. I concentrated on the clouds, because in this case he did the same thing that I did with clouds, but he put in darker colors used as a triad and made darker cloud forms. And in this case where I had used a Naples yellow, he's using, uh, I think, a burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, and um, um, not sure what else. 
something else. <laughs> uh, only the master knows. Look at those cloud forms. Sometimes these clouds are just abstract paintings all by themselves. Now we're back to John Singer Sargent. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the triad inside those dark windows in the background, because that is what makes a, a, a big part of this painting pop. Again, he's going to use three colors in order to make that happen. Look at that middle square there. It's definitely a, a very dark blue, probably an indigo, an ultramarine blue. He's got a lizard and crimson in there, some kind of a yellow going on as well, and the burnt sienna. There's a lot going on in there. So if you're not, oh, and there's my favorite triads of all time. This is, again, is John Singer Sargent. I mean, look at how he massed in that, that dark mass. I mean, that's massing for value, like, like, like um, I can only dream of doing someday. So I hope that is somewhat helpful. You saw how the masters do it. If you're not sure what to do with a triad or what triad you might want to use, I would encourage you to um, look at someone's work that you admire and figure out what colors they're using and start to use some of those colors. And, um, and it does take practice. So remember to keep white your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.